You are listening to Productivity Straight Talk with your host, Amber De La Garza. Amber is a sought-after productivity coach, trainer, speaker, and writer who gives entrepreneurs the straight talk on personal productivity. No BS fluff or overused jargon, just actionable strategies to get results and succeed in business. And here is your host, Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. Welcome, and thank you for listening to Productivity Straight Talk. Today is episode 189, Establishing Meaningful Connections Through Thought Leadership with Carol Cox. If you're a business owner who wants to improve your time management and elevate your productivity so you can maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most, then you're in the right place, and I'm so glad you've joined me. I'm really looking forward to you meeting our guest and my friend, Carol Cox. Carol Cox is the founder of Speaking Your Brand, a coaching and training company that helps high-performing, purpose-driven women entrepreneurs and professionals create their signature talks and gain more visibility so they can grow their business and make a bigger impact and become influencers in their field. Carol is the host of a weekly five-star rated Speaking Your Brand podcast and during election seasons serves as a Democratic political analyst on TV news in Orlando, Florida. In this episode, you will discover what thought leadership is and what it's not, how thought leadership will help your business, how marketing and visibility ties together with thought leadership, Carol's breakdown of her voice framework, V-O-I-C-E, which is amazing, and so much more. Here at Productivity Straight Talk, I define productivity as investing your best time into your best activities. And as a business owner, your best activities will always be found in your high value activities buckets. And I break these buckets down inside the episode 121, productivity plus profitability, why your business needs both to succeed. So if you have not already listened to that episode, go ahead and listen to that episode to get context into the four buckets of your high value activities. But as the Cliff Notes version, the first bucket in that framework is marketing and visibility. As the business owner, it is your responsibility to consistently let the world know what it is you do and how you can help them. And when we talk to Carol in this episode, we are going to be talking about thought leadership. And it is exactly that. How do you let the world know that you are an expert, that you have ideas that will have an impact on the way that they live their lives? And by doing that, you are broadening who knows about you and your business. So I invited Carol on here because I think this is an incredible skill set that any business owner, when applied, can be so much more effective at showing up in the marketing and visibility bucket in their business. In this interview, you'll hear me share a lot about what I do in my own business in regards to thought leadership and how I've used thought leadership to actually grow my business. And Carol is coming in with her expertise on how do you create your own thought leadership platform. And together, I think it's going to be incredibly valuable to answer the question of how do I actually show up and let the world know what it is that I do and how I can help them. All right, now before we jump into the interview with Carol, I do not want to hold you out any longer, but I want to make sure that you have grabbed my free mini training, Take Back Your Time. If you are new here on Productivity Straight Talk or a longtime listener and have not yet got your hands on it, I encourage you to go sign up. So you can click the link in the notes app anywhere you're listening to this episode or head directly over to amberdelagarza.com forward slash take back your time. This mini training was created so that I could teach you a simple strategy to reclaim 30 minutes back each and every day. That's right. If you've ever mumbled the words, I don't have enough time. There's never enough time. I'll never get caught up. Any of those types of negative affirmations or beliefs that you currently have about yourself, then I would love for you to take advantage of my free training. And now, let's meet our guest and get to the straight talk. 
Welcome, Carol Cox, to Productivity Straight Talk. How are you? I am fantastic. Amber, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. I am a fan and I listen every week. Oh my gosh, you are so cute because we're friends and we've known each other for years and I'll get these texts on Monday and I'm like, I haven't even listened to that episode yet. And you're commenting on my episode. I mean, I listened to it because I recorded it, but I just love getting your messages that you are an avid listener of Productivity Straight Talk. And, you know, we go way back and we have a lot of cross, um, I have one of cross uh, listeners, I think, right? Yeah, Um, we have a lot of listeners that listen to Productivity Straight Talk and listen to your podcast, Speaking Your Brand. And so I wanted to bring you on because you are the person that we need to be speaking to about thought leadership. And you and I talk a bit about this and you were also my coach on helping me create my keynote a couple years ago, which was a huge success. I've shared about it in the podcast. It's been, it was a great opportunity to create a phenomenal keynote, but it was actually the baby seed of what is now Leverage Lab, which is my membership program because it's the whole framework behind it. Um, You were a huge proponent of keynote equals you need a framework. And I was like, I got it. We're going to do this. And we did it and it's evolved over the years. But today it's the primary way that I serve my clients in my business. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about you. We're talking about thought leadership and we're talking about what your framework is for thought leadership and what is your framework because I might not say it right. Share that with us. Okay, so I love creating frameworks and a framework is a way that you work with your clients or a way for your clients or your audience to very easily remember and understand what it is that you want to share with them. So a framework can be a visual shape like Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a triangle, could be an alliteration like the three C's of productivity, or it could be an acronym. So I love to create these for myself and for our clients. So in this case, our thought leadership framework is an acronym called VOICE. So V-O-I-C-E and every letter stands for a key component of thought leadership. All right. So we're going to be breaking those down today so that you guys can all hear about her framework. But why are we talking about thought leadership here on Productivity Straight Tech? I just want to make this connection for everyone that's listening. As a productivity coach, it is really important that I support my clients in having them be able to identify their highest value activities. And I identify highest value activities as the ones that move the needle and propel you towards your goal. And every business primary goal should be revenue. So my framework in this section of my business that I teach is the four buckets. And bucket number one is marketing and visibility. And when it's filled up, it leads to bucket two, which is sales, which you'll find your highest value activities as a CEO, then leads to servicing your clients and then leadership. So we're talking to Carol about the marketing and visibility bucket and how you can create thought leadership and show up your best because it fuels all the other buckets that are high value in your business as a small business owner. So how does um, marketing and visibility tie together with thought leadership? Okay, so Amber, it was earlier uh, in, so the summer of 2020, so obviously we're in the midst of the pandemic and my company, Speaking Your Brand, we help our clients who are women entrepreneurs with their public speaking. So creating their signature talks to go speak at conferences, on stages, at TEDx, uh, chapters and obviously all those speaking engagements <laughs> got canceled, <laughs> and so we, you know, we we helped our clients and shift to virtual presentations and webinars, and then we started really talking to them and listening to them and doing surveys to our clients. And this idea of thought leadership, surprisingly to me, kept coming up from them. Mm-hmm. And so I started really thinking about this over the summer, and we did ended up doing a couple of, of months of series on the Speaking Your Brand podcast about finding your voice, about using your voice, about thought leadership. And for one of the episodes, I looked at five speakers who became thought leaders. So well-known ones like Brene Brown, Simon Sinek, even Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Rachel Rogers, who's an entrepreneur. And I was trying to see, well, what did they have in common? What really propelled them into this position of being a thought leader? And so this is where I identified those five elements that became the voice acronym. And so 
I can, I'll, I'll go through that in a moment for you, Amber, but let me just kind of set up a bigger picture of what I feel like a thought leader is, is that as entrepreneurs, as business owners, we help our clients with a particular need that they have. So for you, Amber, you help your clients because they're overwhelmed, they're struggling, they're trying to make sense of what's the best use of their time. And through your coaching and your programs, you help them do that. As marketers, we go out to our audience and we basically tell them like, we can make your dreams come true. Whatever <laughs> it is that you want, like you want great skin, we have the skin lotion for you, right? Right. <laughs> right? You want a fantastic speech, like we can help you do that. We'll make your dreams come true to be standing on that stage in 2022. <laughs> and then as a thought leader though, and you can be all, you should be all of these things in your business. A thought leader says to their audience, have you thought about this? You probably mm. haven't. But if you do, what would happen? So thought leaders really take an interesting idea, one that hasn't been talked about much in their circle of influence. So you don't have to be Brene Brown big. You can just be big in your little circle of the internet. Mm -hmm. A thought leader challenges the status quo, challenges our assumptions, communicates it with conviction, really inspires people to take action. And then what I feel is the most important thing of a thought leader is it helps us to understand ourselves better. Because as humans, that's really what we want. We I want to understand ourselves better, how we relate to each other and how we relate to the world. And thought leaders do that with their messaging and also with their projects, which I really want to talk about in, 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 in this episode as well. Okay, that's awesome. I feel like when I first started in my business almost a decade ago, I remember I would share everyone else's articles and everyone else's quotes. And I, I thought that that's what I needed to do was understand everyone else's body of work around productivity. And something switched for me when I even paused to say, does that feel right? Like, is that what I do? Is that okay? No, no. And then I slowly started getting into saying, well, what do I, what am I seeing works? What have I tried with my clients? What is real world productivity? Not just what you read in like these books where it's cookie cutter. And so my evolution into, you know, thought leadership in my own space was, was slow. And once I started, I was like, I don't want to consume any other person's body of work. So it doesn't influence my viewpoint and like where I'm at. So this is very interesting because I don't ever remember saying I want to be a thought leader. So Carol, do, do, do we need to make that claim? Like I want to be a thought leader or this is just saying I want to be, um, maybe another word would be like an expert or someone that has her own opinions or his own opinions about a topic. It is completely up to you whether or not you want to call yourself a thought leader you are more than welcome to. I know there's a lot of kind of like, people will kind of give you the little shame, like, oh, how can so-and-so be, you know, calling themselves a thought leader? I say, claim it. Like, you can call yourself a speaker. You can call yourself an entrepreneur. You can call yourself a thought leader. If that term doesn't resonate with you, that's totally fine. You don't have to call yourself a thought leader. It's just that it's a term that I use because it's so well-known. It's mm -hmm. like using the term uh, entrepreneur versus something else just because it's, it's well-known in, in our industry. That's right. Okay. All right. So let's um, you break it down your acronym. Okay. So voice. So the first letter V is for a viewpoint for your particular topic area. So whatever it is that your topic is that you really just love talking about, that you're passionate about, what is your unique viewpoint? And you hit on this, Amber, with you were consuming other people's productivity content. And then you realize, well, I don't necessarily agree with all of these things, or I do things a different way. And I see the results that I get with my clients because of this different way of doing things. So that's your unique viewpoint in your particular topic area. Mm-hmm. And your evolution from consuming other people's content to then figuring out what your own, your own viewpoint is, is completely, that's, that's a very common evolution uh, for most people to go through. Well, so, let me ask you this before yeah. you get to the third yeah. one. Do you see a time period for that evolution? Because I feel like mine was a lot of years. <laughs> um, or maybe it was just me building up my confidence, right? Of like use ca like um, client case studies and examples and coaching hours and hours where I believe the evolution was more about me internally versus the evolution of maybe the message. I don't, I don't know. I'm just expressing yeah. my experience. <laughs> I think it depends on the person and their industry. 
So it could be like, there's so much content around productivity that it's not surprising to me that you were absorbing a lot of it because you're a learner. You like to know what's going on. You like to see what other people are doing. And so there, there's so much to absorb in that sense. And then it's very natural for you to work with a bunch of clients and then think, oh, like, what am I doing that's different than right. what other people are doing and recognizing what those commonalities are that you're doing. And then I'm thinking about for speaking your brand. So I started the business in 2015. And I started it knowing that I knew how to create really great presentations and speeches. And then I had to figure out what process do I use to help our clients create great presentations and speeches. So it was an iteration and evolution to the framework, our our speaking framework that we have today. And it took probably about a year Mm -hmm. for me to get to that point to create that process, to create that framework. Got it. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So that was V. So viewpoint, your unique viewpoint. O is open bold, and direct communication to your audience. Thought leaders don't pussyfoot around. (laughs) They don't tiptoe around their message with a lot of like, well, maybe you can consider this or, well, maybe, you know, this might be okay. Like, you know, like they say it like it is and they are very direct and they know that they're going, they will always get pushback from some corners, from some people, but they're okay with that because they know what they're saying resonates with a certain group of people that for them holding back from communicating that way would be doing them a disservice and their audience a disservice as well. And so really being having that open, direct, and bold communication is what sets you up as a thought leader because you're not trying to please everyone. You're really trying to help people understand the core of who they are. Okay. So you just answered the question that I had had for you, the evolution part that I was referencing. It was the evolution of being able to stand in boldness and be confident that I knew that this was right and this worked. And it was because of so many different experiences and client case studies. And it is why Productivity Straight Talk was named Productivity Straight Talk is because I was always told, man, you just give it to me straight. Like you just tell me about productivity. And so I leaned into that boldness and directness into naming the podcast. Okay. All right. This is making sense. For those of you listening, I've actually not heard this acronym. Like we talk about this. So this is all new to me, just like you're probably driving in the car right now listening. So I'm asking all the questions. All right, go for it. Now, this is great, Amber. I love your questions. It's really helpful. The I in voice stands for your individual story that you then universalize for your audience. So what makes a great speech, what makes a great TED Talk is that they're story-driven and that it's a personal story. So your own personal experience that you share the details of, just enough details to grip the audience to, you know, to, that's really compelling for the audience, but not so many details that it ends up like your, your uncle over Thanksgiving, who's like growing on and on about when he was 15 years old. So we don't want to do that. But if you think about like Brene Brown and her TED Talk that really launched her into fame over 10 years ago, she talked about this journey of discovery that she went on in the research she was doing about shame and vulnerability and our desire for connection and belonging. She talked about going to her therapist and realizing, oh, like I need this. (laughs) Like this research that I'm doing is really about me too. And that's where this, your individual story can really help the audience to relate to your message. I have a client of ours. Her name is Tammy Lally. And I helped her with her TEDx talk back in 2017. And she had a very, unfortunately, tragic story that had to do with her family. She had 10 minutes to share that story on the TEDx stage. So we worked really hard on that. And she did it. And she had she has all these elements that we're talking about today. But she took that very individual personal story and universalized it for the audience in her talk. Her talk was picked up by TED, like the parent organization, and now has over 2 million views, which is very unusual for a TEDx talk because most get a couple thousand views because there's so many of them. Right. But, but of the 25,000 TEDx talks that happen every year, only 50 of them are showcased on the TED.com homepage. And hers was one of those 50 for wow. that year. Oh, that is amazing. Now, this is such work. I mean, I I find this to be true in all aspects of content creation is like, if you give me an hour, I'm good. But if you tell me I need to do the same thing and deliver with concise and punch and edit it down in 10 minutes, 
that's where the hard work, that's where the so many decisions of how do you still create that experience, not cut out the good stuff. What is the good stuff? What is the fluff stuff? Yeah, I find this to be the most challenging part. Would you say some of your clients find this part challenging is how to curate that story? Yes, it is the most challenging. It's also the most transformational for them because they find the essence of the thread of their life through the editing process. And I find it the most creative part of working on speeches and our coaches do as well. We held a summit last October and we're doing another one this April 1st, a live virtual summit. And we had 10 women speakers who delivered 10 minute TED style talks. So we helped them very intensely to take their personal story and universalize it. And it blew the attendees away. I mean, they were just on their screen for like six hours that day. Okay, so I was an attendee. I was also a sponsor of the event. I was like all like, yes, I want everyone to know about this. Well, I was able to jump in and jump out and I really did not know what to expect. I don't know that anyone that signed up knew what to expect in comparison to I was sitting on my computer crying and figuring out how I could reschedule appointments later in the afternoon because I was so like, just brought in with these stories. Um, And I was just so inspired about how courageous they were, how um, bold it was. It was so empowering to watch them tell their stories. Um, And I, I remember boxering you like, oh my gosh, what just happened? That was amazing. You created magic in the summit. (laughs) It was. And so much credit goes to those 10 women speakers who were willing to put themselves out there and not you know, willing to do the work, but willing to share their stories to their audience. And we had volunteer speaking coaches, you know, we had volunteers for the event, we had sponsors like you, Amber, it was incredible. And so it was so amazing. That's why I'm so thrilled to be doing it again. And we're going to keep the same format, add some more audience inter- interactivity so that the audience can get, you know, meet each other some more. So I'm, I, I cannot wait. Like we are, we are so pumped. Yeah, (laughs) that's awesome. Okay, so that's a great example of taking your individual story and personalizing it. And I know a lot of times people think it has to be a traumatic story, like something bad has happened to you, but it doesn't have to be. It could could be something that was really empowering or something that happened to you, whether it was when you were younger or more recently in your life, where you feel like this is something that could be a benefit to other people. Like they can see themselves in my story. Okay, Carol, do you remember sitting in a hotel room in Philadelphia? Yes. Okay. So, so Carol and I well, both attended podcast movement and I had done a VIP day with her and we were wrapping up. And so we met inside a ho- her hotel room and we were finalizing the keynote and she was asking me, so what happened when you were a child? And I'm like sitting in a chair in, in her in her hotel room and we're laughing like it's a therapy session. But what she was trying to do was give me the space and time to reflect back and try and pull together stories that they they just become you and they don't they don't seem original or to aha or any anything big. And yet when when she was asking me and poking and prodding me in the best way for these stories, we were able to pull out some great examples of ultimately I was shaped by different stories and experiences that got me here today. I didn't just one day decide to have a passion and love for productivity. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I remember that. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Many of our clients call what we do therapy sessions, but in all the best way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, this was, that was really good. And um, I just remember thinking that that was, it was hard to remember. And so it was helpful was having a way in which you knew they were there and you were asking questions that were kind of like, you know, uh, reminding me and, and forcing me to go back and just really dig and find these connection points that I could have with my audience. Yes. And that reminds me, Amber, that I did a podcast episode so towards the end of 2020 called The Five Kinds of Stories to Share in Your Presentations and Thought Leadership Content. So, you know, thinking about like the questions I tend to ask our clients to share their stories. So that's a great episode. It was um, number 193. Okay, excellent. We'll make sure that's in the show notes for sure. Okay, all right. So then we have the, okay, the next letter is C in voice. So C is the container or the project for your thought leadership message. And this is the part where I feel like so many people miss about what it means to be a thought leader. So I kind of see thought leadership as being a parallel track to your business. So you have your business, you do your marketing, you have your sales offering, whatever it is that you, however, whatever you sell. 
Then parallel to that, you have your thought leadership. Your thought leadership is kind of like this broader message that's more meaningful. It has more impact, but you need a container, like a project for people to get involved in. And a project could be uh, a podcast. Like you, Amber, you're releasing thought leadership content because of the podcast that you have. You could do a podcast series. So if someone has a podcast already, they could do a series, you know, related to something uh, for their thought leadership message. It could be a book. It could be a challenge. Like, you know, like doing like an Instagram challenge or a social media challenge. It could be an event. Like the virtual summit that we did actually came up because I did this episode about thought leadership. And I was like, oh, we need a project. <laughs> like yeah. speaking your brand needs a project to do. So I started thinking like, well, let's do an event <laughs> as our That's thought leadership great. project. So it could be that. So the women who are in our Thought Leader Academy right now, the first month, what they work on is deciding what their thought leadership project is going to be. So they've been working on that. So whether it's a podcast or a video series or an initiative. So it could also be, I have a, a client who she works in healthcare. So she did this initiative called 100 by 2030. So she gives organizations in healthcare to sign up for her initiative where they agree to spo sponsor 100 women of color in healthcare by the year 2030. So she's sponsoring 100 women in the next 10 years. She gets another organization or another person in different organization to sponsor 100 women. Then they get another one. So by the end, she's hoping to literally have like 10, tens of thousands of women who are being sponsored in all these organizations in healthcare. You know what happens? Because she puts out this thought leadership initiative she gets speaking invitations that come to her. She gets podcast invitations that come to her. She has a book deal now that she got because she put this project out there. Okay, this is really getting my wheel spinning here. And what's interesting is like you knew it was a project and then your wheels were spinning and then you created the magic of the summit. What... Um, so with regards to a project, it could be that it's just like an awareness or it could be for profit in the business. Is that correct? Like it could be either one. What do you, what do you recommend? I really see most of the time, most thought leadership projects, again, like they run parallel to the business. So they don't, they're not a, a marketing event, right? That directly leads to a sales offer. So it's not like, so for example, our summit, the virtual summit we did, that was our project. And we, we really were doing it to showcase these women Mm -hmm. And to amplify their voices, especially for diverse women. So I think eight of our 10 speakers were women of color. Like we really wanted to amplify and represent these women. That was our Thought Leadership Project. Now we did end up promoting the Thought Leader Academy on the summit, but it was, the summit wasn't like content from the Thought Leader Academy. Right. Does that make right. sense? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I'm just putting the puzzle pieces together. So like Leverage Lab for me is not my thought leadership project, even though my framework is in Leverage Lab. My, my thought leadership project is coming up with new different ways of speaking about productivity and business on the podcast side of it. All right, I'm with you. Yes. And like you could do an event one day, whether it's virtual or in person, that could be your thought leadership project, or you could write a book or yes. you could do like a challenge, but like a, like a like a thoughtful challenge, not a task oriented challenge where you like you you know, but a more of a thought like thought leadership is a little bit headier, you know, it's a little bit yeah. it's deeper, it's deeper content. Again, it's that more personal content to get people to understand themselves. You know, I think about this often because a lot of what I do is like teaching and it's actionable. And even every podcast episode, I end with action. I will say that in the episodes lately, I've done a lot more like, well, what was your perspective shift? What shifted for you? Because I think back to myself of all the trainings I've done, experiences I've had, and the biggest shifts I've had were not because someone asked me to go take a specific action. It was because I saw something different that I had never seen that way. It was something that I thought I knew. Then they said something and I was like, oh, now that makes sense. And those have been the most powerful, powerful shifts in my business and personal life. Exactly. Yeah. So that would be yes. the thought leadership challenge is having them think or experience something differently, not necessarily take action. Correct. Like you think about our virtual summit, it wasn't training. We didn't right. do training on how to create a great speech. I mean, we had panels on like what went into the speakers working on their speeches, but the content was their speeches. 
Right. And getting people to think deeper and to think differently. Okay, so that was C, the container project for your message. And the last letter E is to be emotive, real, and vulnerable in your content and your delivery. So thought leadership is not superficial. It's not like here are the five things to do, you know, marketing strategies or whatever. It's it's really, in order to be a true thought leader, you have to first be willing to be vulnerable with your audience because vulnerability is contagious. If you are vulnerable, your audience will be too. And that's where you help them with the transformation that you know that they can achieve and that they want to do. So I think about like Brene Brown, again, she was very vulnerable in her TED Talk. So as I was working on this, it was early August of 2020. And I was planning to do an episode for our thought leadership series about like my own journey as a thought leader. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking back, you know, over my career, like in college, like, you know, how I've been a speaker and the different businesses that I've run. And I was going to like do this, you know, like, oh, here's all my successes, but like, here's my failures too. Like, you know, like that type of episode, (laughs) like we've all heard them. And just wasn't sitting right for me. Like I was procrastinating, wasn't Mm -hmm. writing the script. So like I go for a walk every morning and I was on my walk and I was like, oh, so I, you know, and it was, my birthday was coming up and my dad's birthday was coming up and he had passed away my, my uh, senior year in college. So it was 25 year anniversary of that happening. So I just felt really called to share about that story, about that experience. It really didn't have anything to do with thought leadership, like what we're talking about today, but I felt like for the first time in 25 years that I wanted to share the story because it was such an important part of who I am. Mm-hmm. And I shared it on that episode. And I, you know, like vulnerability hangover, for sure. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, wondering like, this is such a personal part of me. And I'm like, like, I'm a pretty private person. Like you can ask me anything, but I'm not like going and sharing my life on social media. But the response that I got from that episode was incredible. And I've heard from women who joined the Thought Leader Academy and from our summit speakers that me doing that episode is what like role modeled for them what they could do for themselves. Wow. Okay, there's a lot of productivity tips in there too. Let me just say, (laughs) did you hear her say that she was, something didn't feel right. She was procrastinating. She wasn't getting the script done. And so that's not her normal MO. So here's the quick lesson, everyone. When that happens, listen to your gut. And like now she went for a walk, like you did everything perfect. Some of my best episodes have also come because I scrapped them. I've recorded episodes three and four times and then scrapped them and just hit record on the mic. And I don't usually do that. Usually I come super prepared and those are always the episodes I get the most uh, feedback from too. So I love that instead of continually making it harder, she there was something else that was calling her and she had to be open for it to show up her best. Great job, Carol. I feel yes. like that can happen for so many of us in different areas of our business. But if we're told that we have to be productive in a certain way, this is back to my own thought leadership. This is where I get all riled up. Hold on, what'd you call it? Bold and emotion. This is where I get all, yes. my fists are pumping right now talking to Carol. Is that if you have been told to be productive in a certain way and that doesn't work for you, you better find the way that works for you. Like that's the platform I stand on because when Carol wasn't putting herself in, well, it's on my list, I have to do it. Just hit record. She was able to really create something amazing. Yes. Well, thank you, Amber. I've learned so much from you. <laughs> <laughs> You're so sweet. Okay. Yeah. If you, if y'all want to know what, what I get fired up about, just watch me. You guys yes. can't see me, but my fists are like pumping up in the air to Carol right now. So I'll calm down. No, now. it's so true. Like, and it's, and it's true. Like I gesture a lot. And so that's actually a good indication, you know, thinking about public speaking and speaking when you're passionate about a topic, if you tend to like move your hands a lot and start gesturing, that's probably a good sign that that's a direction that you need to go in. When we work with our clients, we look like we listen and look for energy a lot. So we'll ask them questions during our coaching session. You know, we'll look for stuff and they'll answer. And we can tell when they're just answering because it's kind of like the same thing they've always said versus Mm -hmm. when they really get energetic about something that we're talking about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's me. I, but it actually, I feel like I'm, I'm like an onion with layers though, because I can talk and there's things that I have to say. And then we go a little bit deeper and deeper and then you'll hit on it. And this happens with my content manager. This is how episodes are created for productivity. Straight talk is we put a, um, 
a question that we want to ha- get answered for the audience out, like, um, how do I do this or what would I do, right? So there's a general topic and then we just talk and I usually start out calm and then we hit on a thing and then I just go and then thank goodness for Zoom because we're recording. And that go mode, once I get there after pulling back the layers of some thoughts that I have is what usually ends up being the episode. But I don't come out, you know, guns blazing on like my my um, viewpoint. It takes like some talking it out and like pulling things back and and then I get to it. I just wanted to say that in case you don't just get to your thing that lights you up if you're listening to this, is it takes some work and practice to pull it back and really find what it is that you feel or believe about something. Yes, talking out loud to someone else is one of the best ways, like you've identified, Amber, talking to your content manager, just having kind of just like that stream of consciousness and then keep going is one of the best ways because we get stuck in our own heads and we circle around and circle around and that's not very productive a lot of the times. That's right. And I think that some people can do it probably journaling, like introverts, probably that's what they want to do. For me, I'm a um, a verbal processor. When I heard that, I felt seen in the world. When I heard that terminology, a verbal processor. When I heard that, talk about mind blown. I'm like, that's me. Oh my gosh, like somebody finally described me. Um, And so now I've created my business that everyone around me can let me verbally process because I'm not going to write it all out and get to the finish line like I could talking it out for sure. Yes, yay for Voxer. (laughs) Yay for Voxer. It makes it so much easier. Um, No, I love it. I'm the same way. (laughs) Uh, Okay, awesome. All right, so um, did you have anything else on the E? No, so it just being, okay. no, no, no. So that was it. Being emotive, real, and vulnerable in your not your content. So like the, actually the message that you're sharing, but also in the way that you deliver it. You know, with that energy, with just that realness, that authenticity. I know the authenticity gets thrown around a lot, but as we can tell mm-hmm. when someone what someone is saying is authentic to them or not, and trust me, your audience can tell too. <laughs> Absolutely. May I ask you to go through them succinctly one more time so that we can wrap our heads in through it. Yes, you may, Amber. Okay. Okay. So voice. V is for viewpoint, your unique viewpoint for your topic area. O is for open, bold, and direct communication. I is for your individual story that you universalize. C is for your container or project for your message, your thought leadership message. And E is being emotive, real, and vulnerable in your content and delivery. All right. So connect another dot for me, Carol. Once you've done the work of thought leadership and you understand this, how will it help our businesses? Yes. Okay. So as we know, like Amber, we've been in business a long time. There's a lot of noise mm-hmm. online. There's a lot of social media posts. There's a lot of emails people get. There's a lot of podcasts out there. There's a lot of videos out there. Just a lot of content for people to consume. People... At the after a certain point in their business, after they kind of start their business and they've been in a few years, they want something more than just the tactic of the week. They want this deeper reflection. They want to understand themselves better. And as a thought leader, by you putting that content out there, your message out there, you are giving people more of what they of they what they want. You're standing out then, and you're also building a community around you. You don't have to have a Facebook group or a private group to build a community, but you're building an ecosystem of people who want to participate, who want to get involved in your thought leadership project, who want to share it for you. I mean, like our clients and the the people who attended the summit and our summit speakers, they're our best marketers. Mm-hmm. They share about us and they share our content because they like it. You know, our like our mission at Speaking Your Brand is to amplify women's voices and it's particularly diverse women's voices so that we have more power and influence and leadership. And so we people can get behind that mission. And the virtual summit just happens to be the project that we're working on. But your thought leadership project can evolve. You can do one project, kind of wrap it up, and then evolve to another project. All right. I'll say too, to add to that, yes, and when I started stepping into thought leadership, I felt so much more fulfilled in my business. So true. Yeah. And I think that that matters, how we show up, how we plow through hard days because there's something we're connected to. There's that that emotion. There's that feeling of like, we have a message we want to share. There's myths that people are believing that we're on a mission to break. And that energy is what 
can get me through hard days, hard weeks or whatever that looks like. But when I didn't have my own stance on the topic that I was at, it was just like, what's next? Like you said, tactically, what's next? What's next? And that's not hardly as fulfilling. Exactly. And yes, so absolutely. Like you'll stand out, you'll feel more fulfilled and you'll attract fantastic clients who resonate with your thought leadership message. And there's nothing better than that. Yes. I feel like we could talk forever. Okay, so that an example of that is when I speak to somebody about potentially working with me and they've been a listener of the podcast, they're speaking the same language because my language isn't the same as every other person's. When they're talking to me, I can tell like, oh, like they they understand my, my stance or my viewpoint. There's a lot of commonality and connection, even though I haven't actually met them prior to that call. Um, and I don't think that would happen if I was just uh, repeating whatever was to be said around time management or productivity. So there's definitely that connection factor for sure. All right, Carol. So you mentioned some amazing things. Um, thank you so much for sharing your framework. I think that this is was a great opportunity for a lot of perspective shift in what we want to create in our marketing and visibility in our businesses. Um, how can our audience members hear more about a summit that I believe you have coming up here in the spring? And what about Thought Leadership Academy? Okay, so two things that I request for those of you listening. So the first thing you're listening to this podcast right now, so go over to the Speaking Your Brand podcast, do a search for Speaking Your Brand, hit subscribe because we'll be talking more about these ideas of thought leadership and our upcoming summit on the podcast. So that's number one. The second thing is that we, I have a page created at speakingyourbrand.com slash Amber. So really easy, speakingyourbrand.com slash Amber. And on it, you'll be able to get this voice framework that we just talked about. So don't worry if you weren't able to write it all down. We will get the voice framework. You'll also get some of the things that we talked about today. So I mentioned a few podcast episodes. So I'll include those on that page. I mentioned Tammy Lally's TEDx talk. So I'll include that. And then I'll also include a link to register for our virtual summit. It's free. So the entire event is free. It's amazing. And it will happen April 1st. So go to speakingyourbrand.com slash Amber for all of that. That is amazing. So on iTunes, we're like podcast sisters. At the bottom, it says listeners also listen to, and it's you and vice versa. I've screenshotted that to you before. So I love that people that are, you know, called to Productivity Straight Talk and have enjoyed the episodes, vice versa, love your content too. So if you have not yet gone and listened and subscribed, make sure you check out Carol Cox Speaking Your Brand. Carol, thank you so much for being here today and always being such a wealth of knowledge and value for my listeners. Thank you so much for having me, Amber. It was a pure joy. (sighs) I knew that... Carol was going to bring the gold. Wasn't she amazing? I just love her expertise. I love the way that she creates these frameworks that makes it so easy to understand the message that she's trying to deliver, which is exactly her zone of genius. And I think you were able to see that today in our interview with Carol Cox. I have loved having you listen to this episode of Productivity Straight Talk. No change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you and your business. So the question I have for you is this. First, is thought leadership right for you? And if it's right for you, is it right for you right now to take action? Because that might not be true for you. I think that when we hear new strategies, we can get incredibly excited and be like, go, go, go. And while I am a big proponent of taking action, it's definitely about taking the right action at the right time. And so maybe this episode is for you and it lines up with exactly what you are working on right now in your business, which is increasing marketing and visibility and thought leadership is a strategy that seems so in alignment with you then I would ask you, what is your next best step, right? Maybe your next best step is reaching out to Carol and getting help and direction and coaching or joining her Thought Leadership Academy. 
perhaps this is a great strategy for you, but the timing's not exactly right. Then maybe the next right step is tuning into her podcast to make sure you stay connected with her, get her information. And then when the timing's right, you know that you'll have the resources you need in alignment with the right time. I am so glad that Carol was able to share with us the importance of thought leadership. And I want to share a personal message to you is that I have found that thought leadership is for everyone. And when I say that, what I mean is so many people think that's for someone else. That's for someone that has more confidence. And I'm here to tell you that even if you don't have the confidence today that you are a thought leader, it takes moving into action, exploring your own voice, finding your voice that creates that confidence. And that's something that I shared in this interview was that only by doing it, only by taking action, only by repetitively showing up week after week after week on podcasts, going on interview after interview on other people's podcasts, speaking on stages all over the country. That's what created the confidence in me knowing uh, my message and what my thought leadership was. It wasn't sitting on the sidelines thinking someday, suddenly I'm going to have the confidence to move into thought leadership. If that message is for you, then I hope you hear me say, now is the time for you not later when you think that magically you get the confidence to move into taking action. We're going to have all the links that Carol shared in this episode in our show notes, and you can grab that by going to amberdelagarza.com forward slash 189. And over there, we're also going to link to the other episodes that Carol has been a guest on here at Productivity Straight Talk. Episode 50, where we did an on-air strategy session with Carol, and I've gotten some great feedback on that. On air, I actually gave her strategies to some of her productivity challenges. And then she was on again in episode 178, where I had a group of my closest business friends come on and I just asked them some great questions. It was called Friends Giving. And I asked them questions about life and business and closing out the year and what their thoughts were. And if you want to get to know Carol and some of my other friends, I definitely recommend taking a listen to episode 178. All right, so I have a few reminders for you as we close out today. First, I want to make sure that you go grab my Take Back Your Time mini training. If you didn't do that at the top of today's episode, you can do that by going to amberdelagarza.com forward slash take back your time. Number two, subscribe on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss another episode of Productivity Straight Talk. And I want to thank you for those of you that have taken the time to leave me reviews. It really helps others get an idea of what they can expect when they tune into Productivity Straight Talk and ultimately just helps me grow the audience and impact that I can make through the work that I do here at Productivity Straight Talk. I have a special thank you going out to Rosie I-40, who recently said, amazing podcast. I have been listening to this podcast starting at the beginning from episode one, and it is amazing. The information is very practical and energizing to keep me motivated in what I am doing to focus on my goals. I am not an entrepreneur, but find the information extremely valuable regardless. Great podcast, highly recommended for everyone. Thank you so much, Rosie140. I appreciate you taking the time to leave that review. And yes, it is true. We have listeners um, in all types of industries, professionals, business owners, and I hear you and reach out. Like if you are listening and you're like, but she keeps talking about business owners. Hey, reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook DMs and just say hi. I would love to hear who I'm attracting here at Productivity Straight Talk. So that's my straight talk for today. Until next time, have a productive week. 